everyone, I am very happy to share with you a tutorial on how to take your Python code, parallelize it, run it on Google Cloud, and get a lot of results very quickly, much faster than if you were to run all of these different inputs on your personal computer. So this tutorial is for you. If you have a machine learning problem and you have a lot of different hyperparameters that you would like to check out, and it would take you millions of years to check them all out on your personal computer, and you want to use the power of the cloud instead. Or if you have an optimization problem and you have a lot of different inputs that you would like to check out, yes, then this is a tutorial for you. If, on the other hand, you have a Python code that you want to run and then you want to split into many CPUs and you would like these different nodes to communicate with each other and then you'd like to split them up again and then again communicate with each other, then this is not the right tutorial. So, what will we be doing? First, we'll be creating a Google Cloud Compute instance. Then we're going to be transferring our files to the cloud, running the parallelized script, analyzing the results, and then returning the results to your local computer. And as a bonus, because it's so popular, how to run Jupyter Notebook from the cloud. So let us get going. First step first, we have some scripts for this tutorial. So you go here into this GitHub that you'll see in the description. Of course, you give it a star. Then you go here into the code. First, you can also, if you want, you can look me up, see that I'm a normal human being and that there are no spam stuff in here. Then you can go and download this zip file, save it to your computer, go and put it here into some folder. Okay, great, save. Then when it finished downloading, go to where you saved it. And it should prompt you to uncompress this file, extract all, get all the files from this tutorial, and then you are ready to go in terms of the tutorial materials. Great, you can take a quick look here. There's several files, not too many. So let us get going. Let's create a Google Cloud instance. So uh, first things first, right over here, is you need to open a Google Cloud account. So you can see here, new customers get $300 in free credits. So if you're new and you don't have an account yet, this is great. You can play around a lot. $300 will take you very far. So go here and I trust you to be able to sign up and create your own account. Once you do, on your homepage, you'll see something probably like this. And now what do we do? We go to the navigation menu over here and go to Compute Engine. And we're going to go and create a Compute Engine. So we go here into Virtual Machine Instances and we're going to create a Virtual Machine. It's going to prompt us for the Virtual Machine name and you can just keep the uh, default over here, Instance 1. Where would you, uh, what servers would you like to use? And basically, uh, you could just keep these at the default. Uh, they have different versions, uh, different generations of uh, the server farms. So you can just play around with it later. And when you play around, the thing to take note of is how much is it costing you per hour? So here we can see, for example, the default, three and a half cents an hour. Not bad. In a whole month, you only spend 24 bucks. So like I said, $300, if you're not using a lot, can take you pretty far. So if you look over here, what we're getting by default is this uh, uh, two virtual CPUs, four gigabyte memory. Okay, so that's pretty little. If you're pl planning to do something intense, you might be thinking going up to two, four, six, two, four, eight, sixteen, something like that. But we're going to keep the default for now because it's good for us. Another thing to notice is the boot disk. Okay, so if I go here, you'll see it only has ten gigabytes. Now, if you're planning to do a lot of runs and each output has you know a few megabytes. And 10 gigabytes is not going to be enough for you. I found myself uh, quickly going over this limit. So just for good practice, I'm going to put in here 11 gigabytes. So if you go over here, you can see that might have changed my price by a tiny bit, like, you know, an extra 44 cents a month. So when you change things, things cost more. So always track your cost here on the top right side. Great. Well, actually, we're almost done. Uh, it's not that difficult. Last thing we need to do is put in here an SSH key under security. So if you have one, you put it here. If you don't, no worries, we will be making one. So I'm going to assume we're on a Windows and you go into your command prompt. And here is where we get to use some of the stuff that you just downloaded. So I have made for you a little cheat sheet so you can go and take a look at it over here. How do we set up an SSH key? I go here into SSH key gen. Copy it, paste it, enter. Where would you like to save the key? So that sounds pretty good. 
do I need a passphrase? No, you don't need a passphrase right now. So just click enter, enter again. And that's it. Seems like you just created an SSH case. So let's go and take a look if it's there. Go into that SSH location. So for me, it's over here. And you'll see that it has just created this public key and this private key. And that is awesome. Great, we are basically ready to go. So all we do is we take this public key and you open it in some sort of editor. So for me, it's Notepad++. Now I'm gonna go do Control A, Control C to copy all of it. And I'm gonna paste it over here. I'm gonna wait. And then we see right here, this is my username. So this is my desktop, has a username and it's Ahino. Uh, part of my name and uh, this is important for you to remember so take note of it and and then you that's it you're done create Ta -da! isn't that amazing you just did the first step if this is the first time you created an instance uh, mazel tov congratulations great work okay so while this is running oh it's actually almost done uh, you will have to go and have a way to go on SSH in uh, a lot of times people will use putty or something like that but I like MOBA Xterm, great, it has a better GUI in my opinion, so we're, that's what we're gonna be using for this tutorial. So you go over here, and I'll also put it in the description, and you click Download Now, and you download it. So let's see where we are with the Google Cloud. You see it finished twirling around, so now we can go and open our terminal. So this is the IP address. This is where how we're gonna go and get into the server. Click here, copy to clipboard, and now I'm going to open Mova Xterm. Perfect. Take a drink of water while it's opening so you guys can also relax. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna go and take, open a new session and SSH. And you remember we just had that IP address so I'm just gonna paste it into here. And you remember the new username? That's probably something close to your name. Put it right in there. Advanced SSH settings, use private key. Now remember where the SSH was located, so where that file location, if you don't know where, where a keygen put it for you, then just go back to your terminal and find where that is, and then put in the public key, and then click on OK. And now the computers know, oh, I have like this very long SSH password, and they can authenticate that it's you. Awesome, wow, we have just entered into uh, this Google Cloud um, virtual machine. That's awesome. So how do we run stuff? Let's say I wanna click here Python. Nothing happens, why is that? And that is because nothing has been downloaded on this machine and this is a, a blank slate and we have to now fill it up with a lot of stuff that we have to download. Well, lucky for you, I have already uh, created a little bash script that will download a lot of stuff that you might want, like Python, for example. So I'm gonna go here and show you what this cloud setup file looks like. So apt is the program uh, that Linux uh, Ubuntu computers use to download stuff. Think about it like pip. It is uh, a download manager. So you can see I'm downloading a few things, Python 3. Uh, I'm downloading uh, pip somewhere here. And I'm also downloading a few extra stuff uh, for compilation. Uh, this one you can get rid of, so if you feel like, oh, I, I don't need a, none of my packages need a GCC, so you can kind of erase that out. I'll just leave it in there for, for why not. And then I'm going to create a folder using make directory. So I'm gonna make a folder called code. Then I'm going to move into that folder called code, and inside there I make another folder called results. Then, because uh, I want to create a virtual environment in which I can download a lot of packages. So I'm going to make a uh, Python 3 virtual environment, and then I'm going to activate it. And this is important. You can read up more about it online. If you want to again go into that virtual environment, you will have to do this every time you open the same terminal. Okay? But you'll see all that happens. Do not fear. Okay? Now I've taken, uh, decided for you that these are pretty common packages, so you can download NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. So for your application, if you have other things that you want to install here, sklearn, something like that, you just add it here, pip install sklearn. Okay, so that's awesome. Now you can see that I'm saving it now, and I've saved it in a DOS or Microsoft system, but in the cloud it will have to uh, be in the Linux system, so you'll have to change the endings. So I put in here for you a little command on how to do it. So I'm already right now going to copy this because I'll be using it in a moment. But wait, how do we get this script 
onto the cloud. I mean, it's kind of like in a different space, right? It must be so hard and tedious. But alas, it is not. All you have to do is go into here, session. A secure file transfer protocol. Oh, and I shouldn't have copied that. Should go back into here, go into external IP, copy it. Go here, put it into the remote host, and then write your username. And do not forget, you have to put in the SSH key over here, so use private key. Go over here, choose your public key, and click on OK. Now something magical is going to happen. You're going to see inside of here all the stuff that is on your uh, remote uh, virtual machine. And over here, you're going to see all the stuff that's on your local computer. And all you have to do to transfer one from one to another is to drag. That's how lovely MOBA Xterm is. Love it. So I'm going to go to my file where I put my uh, tutorial stuff. Then it's going to show here. I'm going to go in a little further, actually. And I'm going to go and take this script called Cloud Setup, and I'll put it right over here. That's awesome. Then I'm going to go right here into the terminal, and I'm going to change the endings like I told you. So we'll go back here and copy this right here. And Control c Oh, wrong place. And then paste over here. Click OK. Now all my endings have been changed, so all I have to do is to execute it. So, lucky for you, you don't have to do a lot of thinking. You just go here and the source will execute it for you. Source and then the name of the file. And paste. Ta-da! Wonderful. Great, so now it's running and installing a lot of things for you. And that's awesome. So, this might take a few moments. So, while we're waiting for things to install, let us go and look at what we're going to run once uh, it's done installing this stuff. So, we're going to be running two files multi-thread problem, and my complex script. Okay. So how is this going to work? So like I said, this tutorial is for you if you have a very long function that you want to test on a lot of different inputs. So what happens here is you have to go and basically take this function, my complex script, where it says very long function, copy and paste your very long function. And then you have to define what are the different inputs that you want to get that you will give to every single CPU task, or that you will uh, send to every single thread, okay? So for example here, I've defined I would like to get XYZ. Uh, I always take the uh, run number and the folder where I'd like to save the results. So what this function does is it takes XYZ and does the very fancy calculation of X times Y times Z, and then it saves it to a file. Uh, run number, dot text, and with the results, right? The calculation results. Then, to make it seem like it takes longer than a millisecond, uh, I'm going to make it sleep for three seconds. Okay, so this is the very long function, and all you have to do is input your function into this location. Then what happens? How do we send it to the different CPUs and have them all processing in parallel? Well, that's where we use a uh, Python package called multiprocessing, and it basically does all, all that for you, really. So what we have here is I've made a class called predictor. Okay, and now it's predictor because this is was mainly used for machine learning purposes where I was just varying the hyperparameters. And this uh, is a multiprocessing.process subclass. Okay, and what it does is it takes a task uh, and sends it to uh, the C and then takes a task from the queue and then runs it right here where it says complex function dot very long function input. So it sends input into your function and then calculates it. And this is where this stuff you don't actually have to touch at all. Where you have to make changes is right here between change code below and change code above. So here what happens is you make a list of tasks and you want to give every task a dictionary. And in the dictionary you have all the different varying inputs that you want to check out in your script. So for me, it was just I kind of made a list of uh, random XYZs, but what you could do here is you could just load in a file that you've already defined these different uh, lists of variables, the number of runs, and for our case, it's the number of CPUs is two, but if you have a, you know, if you're getting a larger machine, you can change this to eight, 100, however large your machine is. Okay, so, and the run number, of course, which is just the I over here. And then what happens here is that the multiprocessing, we can also use it to create a queue of tasks. So you create a lot of different predictor objects, the same as the number of CPUs. 
And then what happens is that all these CPUs, when they're not doing anything, they take a task from the queue until there are no more tasks left in the queue and you are done. So that, that's how this runs and uh, it's pretty simple to manipulate. We'll see how it runs. Great. Now let's go back and see if it finished. And my oh my, it has already downloaded all the stuff that we needed. You can even see here, it just installed pandas, installed numpy. Lovely. Now, like we said before, we have to go and move things onto the server. So let us go and do that again. We've already done it once and we can do it twice. So we're refreshing here and we see, like we were planning, we made a folder called code. We go into there and we're going to go and like before, just copy all the files that we want to move over and put them over here. Wonderful. I think they should all appear. Great. And now all we have to do is basically run it. So just to do some QCing, let's go and run my complex script just one time, okay? Before we go into the whole multi-threading, okay? So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna click Python my. Now, if you'll notice, I just click on the tab here and it completes it because I don't have any other functions with an my. And I'm going to go and click on okay. And let us see what happens. It's gonna think and that it's done. And let's see what it did. So I'm gonna go here, refresh the results, go into the results folder, and I see I just created a new file called run1. So we see that it works well. Now I can even open it if I want, and I can see I got the result 10, and that is lovely. If you're wondering where that 10 came from, uh, if you look here at the different function, if you run your very complex script, with, then it will just go here into the area under name equals main, and it ran it by five times two times one. So the result should be 10 and that's what we got. So that's wonderful. Looks like it's working fine. See, it's always nice to get QC before you start running it a bajillion times. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the multi-threading thing. And if we see it, it's gonna run it 20 times over the two CPUs. So let us go and run this. So we're gonna go over here and Python multi there we go, and let us see what happens. Ah, it is going very quickly. It should go for three seconds for each one, but because we have two CPUs, it's actually going much faster than we would expect because it goes twice as fast, does two at a time. And that is so nice. That is the power of using a lot of computational resources. So that is wonderful. So we're gonna get to 20 pretty quickly. Okay, I mean, we are basically so close to being finished. I mean, we've already run it, and now we're gonna have to analyze the results. So let's look actually at that script for analyzing the results to get intuition and how you can do it yourself as well. I'm gonna put it over here. And all it does is it says number runs 20. This is the folder where I put the results. The uh, files of the results have a certain structure that you uh, defined over here, right? This same structure and same file names. And you're gonna run through the file names and you're gonna append your results right like this over here. And then you're gonna make a big CSV with all the results together, right? And this is good because you're putting into different files all the results because uh, you cannot, when you have things running at the same time, sometimes it's not smart to put everything into the same file. They could overwrite, the order may change. So it's best to put things into separate files. So if I go over here and I click on results, Look at that, I have 20 different files, and now we're gonna take the results from all these files and put them into one. So that will be, we'll be able to see everything in a concentrated fashion. So I think I called it analyze something or not. What did I call it? I called it process. Oh, that's fine, good idea. Process results, it's thinking, and it did it pretty quickly. If I go over here, I see a results file, great. I'm going to open it, and now it's going to open it in my Excel on the local computer, but it's actually secretly still on the server. I'm trying to see maybe if I said save as, what would it kind of, would it be confused or not? Uh, kind of like a little experiment, but it seems to not be confused. So you can just also, from here, save it onto your local computer. Great, and what we see here is all the different results compiled into one place. So that's that's just wonderful. I just ran it 20 times, I got 20 results, and I'm a happy camper. Great, so let me close this, 
And now the question is, how do we get the results back onto my computer where I can go and show it off to all my coworkers? So of course, you can always do the very easy thing of just dragging it over here. Okay, so I'll do that, for example, with the input data. I'll just drag it over, and now it's just on my local computer. And I'll show you also one more thing. If you want to be cooler, or if let's say you have to move a lot of files at once, and you want to do it programmatically, you can also do it from the terminal. So if you go here and we take a look at the cheat sheet, it says copy files from your computer to the cloud. You can do it here using the command secure copy, or uh, you can go copy files from the cloud server to your computer, and that seems more like it. So here you have to put in the address for this session. So I'm gonna go over here, copy this address, put it over here, and then paste it. Now what's the name of my file? Pretty sure it's something like results.csv. Okay, great, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna copy it. Now, I'm gonna go on CD to my uh, folder where I want to copy it to. So documents, a Google Cloud tutorial, and then, um, hmm, there we go. And I'm now going to copy it into this location. So I pasted it. I sure you wanna continue connecting, yes. No such file, results.csv, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, actually I have made a small mistake, but we can all learn from it, right? Because results.csv is not in my home directory, it is in several subdirectories down. So I have to actually put its exact address. So I'm gonna go over here and say, aha, uh -huh, like that. And no, I think it should work. So let us try that again. Control C and Control V and enter. Ta-da! It shows me 100%. This takes a long time. This can be meaningful. And let us go and see if we actually got it in here. And maybe we have to refresh it. Or maybe I put it actually one before. And there it is. We just transferred it using the local terminal. That is great! Now, one more thing. If you have a very big, uh, you know, you gotta a very big project and you want to run a lot of different parameters and it's going to take a long time, you don't want to run it in the server, server with just Python and then the name of the file. You would actually want to use something called nohop. And I put that here in my cheat sheet. Let's find it. And the way it works is like this. And actually you could um, even put the output into here, output.txt. Oh, like that. So you're going to go here and let's run it again using no hop. So I go here, up oh, here, and I'm going to run it again. Paste. Now you can see that the results are not displayed like over here uh, in the terminal, but it is running it. And this way, if you close the terminal, fall asleep, your computer shuts down, the server of Google is not shutting down. So it will continue running and uh, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to babysit your program. So that is wonderful. Okay, guys, let's go back to our schedule. And what did we say we were going to do? We created a Google Cloud instance. We transferred our files to the cloud. We ran a parallelized script, analyzed the results, returned the results back to the local computer. We are up to a last bonus if you are still interested. How to run Jupyter Notebook. So a lot of you may love Jupyter Notebooks and think, oh, this is terrible. How can I, you know, uh, edit things uh, on the cloud like this? So what you can do is you can go and do here pip install Jupyter Lab. I think it's Jupyter Lab. But let me actually check. And that is why we have the cheat sheet. Yes, and I am right. Pip install Jupyter Lab. Great. Oh, let us click OK. Uh huh. Could not install due to environment error. Not found. Did I do a. Aha, uh -huh, I do not know how to spell. That's why you should just copy and paste it, guys. The cheat sheet is great, and you should use it. And I should use it too. Okay, wonderful. Now, after you have downloaded it, what you have to do is then copy the next line. I'm taking no risk. I'm going over here, Control C, and I'm gonna wait for a moment. Okay, and I'm gonna do paste. And what happens here is I just said Jupyter Notebook, open it for me with no browser, and send it to port 880. Okay, so that's great. And what, what this means is that it's creating the Jupyter Notebook, but 
it's not showing it on the server browser. So we can actually go and take it from there and show it on our local browser. So how are we gonna do that? We have one more command. We go over here to this location and actually we have to change one thing. First, you have to change the username, okay? Your name is not, you know, so whatever name you have. And then again, the external IP, copy it, paste it over here. Great. Then copy this whole thing. And this time be careful, you actually have to put it into your local command prompt, okay? So copy and paste it. And what you have to do then, last step to open the Jupyter Notebook, is to go over here and like it says, to access the notebook, open the file in a browser, or copy and paste one of the URLs. So I go over here and I say copy. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't do that. I just go copy this way. And then put it over here. Dum bum ba dum. Voila! Look at that. We see here the same stuff that we saw in MOBA Extern, which is basically I can see my Google Cloud instance right here, and I can go and uh, create new another Python notebook and visualize results. So I can go here, and for example, and as soon as it opens, I can say success. Great. That is wonderful. Okay, I think that is it for the tutorial. I actually have no one last point, and this is another bonus point. If you are by chance a researcher in a university listening to this tutorial, you can get a Google Cloud research credit. So I have applied and got this, and it is wonderful. Instead of $300, you can get $1,300 if you are a PhD student. So if you're doing something cool, and you should just apply to Google and ask for some money. Right. Now I'm really done. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, night, whatever. Okay, see you. Oh, hello again. I forgot something. You guys have to, when you are done, to delete your session. So go back here to this page, click over here, and then on delete. Delete. And you should wait a few moments. See that it completes successfully so that uh, Google doesn't keep on charging you for uh, using their virtual machine. And now I'm actually done.